Park Church and all of our friends from around the world, we hope, that are visiting with us this morning. We usually call this Christmas Sunday and cheat on the somber Advent songs by singing some Christmas carols. It just seems that there are not enough opportunities to sing Christmas carols, but it is still Advent. I do pray that all of you will return with friends at 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve when we actually welcome the baby. We're trying to recreate the mood in our empty sanctuary with candlelit pews, altars, and the Advent wreath alive with flame. To that end, consider getting a candle at your house to light while we are singing Silent Night at the end of the service. We often do that here, and we carry out the single light into the world, asking ourselves how long and how far can we carry Christ's light. If you need candles, there are some here at the church. If you can't stay up late on Christmas Eve, watch the service on Christmas Day, perhaps with the family members that you're with, and also share them on all of your social media. It is still Advent. We are still expectant. Jesus is still inside the womb, awaiting God's promise of salvation, of justice, of guidance. We are still awaiting wisdom's glory. May God richly bless you now as Al comes to bring one of the spirits of Christmas into our worship. God bless you. Ho, ho, ho. It's me, Santa Claus. It's a busy time of year for me, but I took the time out to visit Haddon Park Church this Sunday to worship with some amazing people. I love how welcoming they are and how much good they do within our world. It is why they're getting presents this year instead of lumps of coal. Ho, ho, ho. This is my favorite part of their service. Here, the welcoming statement of Haddon Park Congregational Church United Church of Christ, as we prepare to worship. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we seek to find a place for you here at 6 Clover Street, Worcester, Massachusetts, United States of America, Planet Earth, and also virtually. We hope you find peace and uplift in our worship. Welcome to all who have no church home, to all who need strength, to all who want to follow Christ, to those with doubts or those who do not believe at all. Welcome to new visitors and old friends. Welcome to all who have been wounded or unwelcomed at any church, anywhere, anytime. Welcome to all immigrants and refugees in the name of Jesus Christ, who was born in the town of Bethlehem, where his earthly parents were strangers. Welcome to grandparents, mothers, fathers, and single and partnered people. Welcome to people of all colors, cultures, abilities, sexual orientations, and gender identities to old and young, to believers and questioners, and welcome to questioning believers. Let us prepare to worship God.
Because too many people are wandering in the wilderness, because too many people are sitting in the valley of the shadow of death, we light candles. Because people all over the world are suffering and we're too busy to notice, we light candles. Today we stop everything and light these candles. One for hope, one for peace, one for joy, and one for love. May the light from these candles overwhelm the world. May the light from these candles illuminate the valley of the shadow of death. May the light and the fire from these candles burn away everything that is preventing God's love to be born among us. Friends, be not afraid, for even now, even now, God's love is overwhelming the world. Amen. Shine on us, O God of justice, guide our path through gloom of night. Bear within us wisdom's glory, come to us, O Christ the light. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O God, the prophet proclaims, the angels announce, the star lights the way, and we still ask where. Like children, we stand first on one foot and then the other, waiting impatiently for a parade, so eager for the bands and floats that we miss it while telling a friend what's coming. We want a circus god. We want ringmasters and acrobats, tigers and elephants, beautiful bareback riders, not some straw-strewn hovel with a sway-back donkey and a tired woman with dark skin. God, keep us willing and alert that when you reveal yourself, we may be aware. Gloria in excelsis Deo In shall cease day Gloria In shall cease day Gloria In shall cease day Yes, I'm reading from the Hebrew Scripture, Psalms 89, 1 through 4, 9, 19 through 26. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish with, the, with your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, one said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. My hand shall remain with him. My arms shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. My faithfulness, my faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name, in, in my name, his horn shall be exalted. I will see. I will set his hand on the sea, and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, "You are my God, and the rock of my salvation." The Hebrew Scripture for the event people. Amen. Read in the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Luke and John. Read in the Bible and learn the news, how the little boy child was born. Read along Mary and Joseph came, arrived.
the elders and the Hebrew priests are preaching in the tabernacle hall, standing in a wonder at the words they heard from a little boy child so small. month the angel Gabriel was sent to God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David the virgin's name was Mary and he came to her and said greetings favored one the Lord is with you but she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be the angel said to her do not be afraid Mary for you have found favor with God and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of the ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now you, and now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for, who, for her who said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to the word. Then the angels departed from her. The angel's word for the church of Hadwin Park Church. Amen. What shall I give this child? His little heart is racing. His mind is running wild. Dreaming of this night. The jolly old man's flight. What shall I give this child? Seems I've walked for miles Up and down the aisles Of every mall and department store in town I've looked everywhere in sight Nothing seems to fit just right For this little gift God gave me Sleeping there so sound What shall I give this child? I ain't a major Meet his mother's loving smile Born this holy night To save the world from fright What shall I give this child? Well, I just don't have the means For a child who's answered dreams And will grow to be the savior of mankind When I bow down Before the glorious crown I feel so undeserving Of the love expressed this night What shall I give this child? miracle for the Christ child oh so mild give them my heart swear I'll do my part to live in his amazing grace make this world a better place 
but you're like in this child. Living His amazing grace, make this world a better place, but you're like in this child. A long time ago, in communist Russia, there was a famous weatherman named Rudolph. He's always had a 100% accuracy rate for his forecasts of the Russian weather conditions. He was dearly loved by everyone because he was always right. They respected him for his faultless foresight. He was particularly good at predicting rain. One night, despite clear skies, he made the prediction that at 6 p.m. the following day, a violent storm would appear. He made this when he was announcing the news and telling the folks of the weather. He said it's going to flood the town, and he warned the people to prepare for the worst. His wife argued with him. His weather prediction could not be right. There were clouds everywhere, and it was one of the most beautiful days within 10 miles of that village. Rudolph told her to be quiet and said his Russian heritage was behind him, and he knew what he was talking about. She argued and argued. They argued and went to bed mad at each other. During the night, the worst rainstorm hit the village, the likes of which they had never seen. That morning, Rudolph said to his wife, see, I told you it was going to rain. His wife admitted once again, your prediction came true. Rudolph, how are you always so accurate? To which he replied, Rudolph the Red knows rain, dear. Quoting from my sermon on the first Sunday in Advent, in 1965, Howard Thurman wrote a book entitled The Luminous Darkness. He was a prolific writer, mystic, theologian, and pastor. Dr. Thurman reframed the definition of darkness. In addition, as I said before, to his assertion that segregation as a result of the maintenance of white supremacy was sinful, he came to terms with the darkness of his own skin in the light of a society who vilified and dismissed him for his skin's hue. Thurman found beauty in what many could not see, as he did under the canopy of his favorite tree in the darkness of the night. His black skin was no trap, no burden, but a conduit to the welcome wisdom that God is also a God in the dark. Black lives have always mattered. Dr. Sam addressed some of this concern and interest in the Blue Christmas, which is now available on YouTube. As we stand in the darkness of Advent, we are called to welcome the darkness. And this includes creating new myths of Advent that proclaim that blackness is beautiful. In fact, we are called to carve it out from the tinsel and the trees and the muzak that might pull us away from the luminous darkness. Barbara Brown Taylor, an Episcopalian priest, says it this way, as I write, the end of daylight savings time is around the corner. A week from now, the sun will come up at 7 a.m. and set before six, so that the day is more dark than it is light. Darkness, she said, is complete where I live way out in the country at the end of a dirt road. When city people come to visit, they get jumpy after dark. Christian people do too. Leading me to wonder where we got the idea that darkness exists chiefly to be vanquished. I saw a, short, a church sign that said it much more succinctly. If you cut off God's light, he'll be sitting in the dark with the devil. Today, while we do cheat on Advent and sing a few Christmas songs, we got to be honest, we're still pregnant. In the storyline of Christmas, we're probably about nine months pregnant. We're bursting 
We are full. We are ready, like a beached whale. But the baby is not here. There is a miracle waiting to happen in that dark and moist womb. Can we be patient at least for another four days? Ask any expectant mother if she wants her baby to come early. And she'll say no, she does not. As badly as her back hurts, as long as it has been since she's seen her toes, she's willing to wait because the baby's not ready yet. The eyelashes are ready, but not the fingernails. The kidneys are ready, but not the lungs. Those wing-shaped sacs are still preparing to make the leap from fluid to air. Still more time. Time in the dusky womb, where the baby is growing like a seed in the dark. There's one word for darkness in the Bible that stands out from the rest. It shows up in the book of Exodus at the foot of Mount Sinai, right after God had delivered the Torah to God's people. And it says, Then the darkness, then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God is. We seek the thick darkness where God is every time we close our eyes to pray, every time we meditate and turn the lights out. Here's a helpful reminder to all who fear the dark. Darkness does not come from a different place than light. It is not presided over by a different God. The long nights of Advent point us toward the God for whom darkness and light are alike. Both are fertile seasons for those who walk by faith and not by sight. Even in the dark, right now, the seed sprouts and grows. We don't know how. While God goes on giving birth to the truly human in Christ and in us, patiently wait. Carve out some dark time in the next days and wait and sense the life that is waiting for the baby, new life for us and for our world. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Shall we pray? O oh God, we wait in the darkness, expectantly, longingly, anxiously, and thoughtfully. The darkness is our friend. In the darkness of the womb, we have all been nurtured and protected. In the darkness of the womb, the Christ child was made ready for the journey into light. It is only in the darkness that we can see the splendor of the universe, blankets of stars, the solitary glowings of distant planets. In the darkness of night, desert people find relief from the cruel, relentless heat of the sun. In the blessed desert darkness, Mary and Joseph were able to flee with the infant Jesus to safety in Egypt. In the darkness of sleep, we are soothed and restored, healed and renewed. In the solitude of darkness, we sometimes remember those who need God's presence in a special way. The sick, the unemployed, the bereaved, the persecuted, the homeless, those who are demoralized and discouraged, those whose fear has turned to cynicism, those whose vulnerability has become bitterness. Sometime in the solitude of darkness, our fears and concerns, our hopes and our visions rise to the surface. We come face to face with ourselves and with the road that lies ahead of us. And in that same darkness, we find companionship for the journey. In that same darkness, we sometimes allow ourselves to wonder and worry whether the human race is going to survive. We know you are with us, O oh God, yet we still await your coming. In the darkness that contains both our hopelessness and our expectancy, 
we watch for a sign of God's hope, which we find in Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, my name is Linda, and I am thankful for Hadley Park Church because of the love and the joy that I have found here. Uh, I am so thankful that I found this church and can be a part of it, even a small part of it. I love the choir and all of the people in that and Brett, and um, I love singing from the heart and singing for the soul. Thank you, Hedwin Park. Hi, everyone. I'm by the names of Hassan Sevdiva Chevla, Ugandan. Uh, I'm so grateful for the life and happiness, joy that I received from the Hardwin Park Church in Worcester. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, the congregation there. Thank you, Pastor Judy. Thank you all. You guys have been tremendous in my life. You guys, I knew I found a family that has really been helpful in my settling here in the USA. We wait upon you now for our morning offering. and 
trade your dreams for glory. Make room in your heart. 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 Joy to the He was born in an obscure village. He worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30, and then became an itinerant preacher. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college. He had no credentials by himself. He was only 33 when the public turned against him. His friends ran away, and, uh, and he was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. He was laid in a barred grave. Nineteen centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure of the human race. All the armies that have ever marched. All the navies that have ever sailed. All the parliaments that have ever sat. And all the kings that have reigned have not affected life here on this earth as much as that one solitary life, Jesus Christ, the Holy Child. And so we pause this day to celebrate the kingdom of God experienced in the life of Jesus. In the Gospel of John, it is written this way. In the beginning was the Word, and with, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Jesus, and without him, not one thing came into being. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God in the highest. And peace be on earth. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas.